El Cedillo and up around uh, Moriarty and out towards, uh, you know, Grants and Gallup. They get snow, but well, right down the middle of Albuquerque, uh, there can be snow all the way around that town, and uh, Albuquerque's clear of snow. Oh, no, they got snow just a couple of days ago. In fact, the guys were eight. I, was, I talked to them every day. And, uh, you know, when we lived there, we got snow on and off at least once or twice a year. Uh, but the things that would strike in also these areas out here, like in Texas, um, rain is an issue, you know, because the elevation is so high. So the clouds are up there. It may be raining, but uh, it won't hit the ground. I'm trying to eat this sandwich. <laughs> K1LSB. AI5DD. I just making sure I'm, I'm ready for trivia. I'll go ahead, IDD, K1LSB. And there's Mark, guys. How say hi to Mark? Oh, come on. Hi, Mark. Morning, gents. Hey, oh, good. Mark, can you not hear Elmer? He said hi to you. Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard you ever heard it, heard everybody, even the gents. I, I didn't mean to, didn't mean to butt in. I just wanted to make sure I was ready for trivia. K1 LSB. K1 LSB, AFIDD. Yeah, you're 10 over here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Thank you, sir. K1 LSB. How do I sound over? Bill. Hey, Mark, you're 20 over here, and Joe, you're 20 over, sounding good. Yeah, Roger, you too, Jerry. I wish somebody would come and run this uh, drill with hole punch or cut, I'm having to cut wads for my 36 navies out. Yeah, Joe, did you look at any more of them black powder pistols? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked. Oh, they're awesome. Uh, I, I, what I'm doing, I'm cutting wads out using the uh, Harbor Freight hole punches. You can buy the hammer type or you can buy the kind that's got the square shank, uh, hex gun uh, shanks on them. And I did the hammering, but I got tired of that, so I'm using a hand drill and these other ones and cutting that water. What you do is I make my own homemade bore butter and then I heat that up in a pan, some of that, and after I cut a pile of these out. And then I put them in that bore butter and kind of just cook them real low heat. More or less you're just soaking all the, the bore butter up into it, the one, and then I let them cool on wax paper. So you load that under your ball, and what that does is it allows your cylinder to run a lot more freely for a long time without locking up real fast. Because if you run it as a dry ball, your cylinders will lock up real fast. They get where they just want him hard turn, and because that black powder gets under the uh, the uh, pin that ho ro the cylinder rotates on and jams it. So this way it runs a lot longer, and it keeps the powder the powder, the powder filling soft in the barrel too. Yeah, I was thinking about making those military loads like in the paper where you bite it off and then put it down. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you use what is it, nitrated paper, or you can use like zigzags and, and nitrate it and stuff like that. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it's that would be really awesome to do. Yeah, and I'll tell you something. If you don't make your own bore lube, you can use muzz loading lube. I make my own out of beeswax and lard. In fact, if anybody out there's got beeswax, I need it. I'd buy some. Uh, I like real, like, real. I make my real long stuff like they did in the fur trade, but uh, and, and I use lard. Like you buy at the store, you know, that comes in a can, it's real lard. I don't use Crisco or nothing like that. But uh, anyway, Joe, it just helps your revolver last, run longer. But yeah, that's another way to do it, because if you get in fast action shooting, you never know when you need, you know, rapid fire. Yeah, roger that. But you can, I don't know, I don't know if any guys are putting that water in the ball in those nitrate power papers, but I mean, if you've done it right, you can have your lip cave water right there under the ball and paint it in the powder just as well. I, you know, you just have it wrapped in that paper. Yeah, Roger, I think, um, I'm thinking more of the musket, uh, where they bit the end off and then poured the powder and everything. It was all in one place. Oh, yeah, you can do that, too, and uh, uh, I've done that, and, uh, yeah, it works uh, well. I mean, I'm, not me, I'm talking about not as nitrate powder, but I've done it far as, you know, uh, like I've had those uh, little uh, loader things, the little plastic deals, and you put your pre-everything in there, and then that way, if you're out deer hunting, you can do a rapid shot pretty fast.
Yeah, Roger. And the main thing about cleaning afterwards with all the black powder, I think you just use soap and water, right? Yeah, that's all I use. I, I'll tell you what, I don't even use Dawn. Now, I buy Dawn dishwasher looking for my dishes, but it's expensive, you know, even at Walmart. And that's where it gets because it's about the best price per ounce. But at Walmart, I'll buy an Ajax. And I just I have it dedicated only for cleaning muzzleloaders and, uh, to, you know, remove that fouling. And that Ajax works great and it's cheap. Yeah, that's cool. That's that's something to think about. And uh, also, the powder, I think, is harder to find now. Or can they ship it to you? I don't know, because it's considered an explosive. Well, yeah, you can have it shipped. Uh, look up Jack's Powder Keg. Uh, you can, and there's all kinds of other companies sell some black powder. You'll have to, depends on how much you buy. I think you'll have to do a little hold harmless agreement, sign a little deal, and email it back, say electronic, say electronic signature or, or hard copy in the mail. But, I mean, it's not a big deal. You can have it shipped to your door. I recommend real black, pure black powder. And right now, Shudson is a pure black, and uh, there's another one. Uh, I'd have to look it up right quick in a minute if you need to know the name of it. But I don't use any substitutes. I use pure black. Uh, to me, it's, all my muzzle shoot more accurate with real black than I do with the substitute. Yeah, Roger that. I don't want any synthetic stuff. Yeah, you'll like that real black, and it cleans up really easy with that Ajax, and, you know, make it up a little so hot, soapy water. Like my revolvers, you know those bed pans you get from the hospital where you've been sick, and they send them home with you with all that uh, clean supplies, you know, and high tech supplies? I saved those. I've got several of them in little bed pans, and I break my revolver. If I need to break it all the way down, I'll break it down and just dump it in there with that hot, soapy Ajax uh, water and just, you know, take brushes and things and wash them up and then I uh, uh, dry them off and uh, you know rinse them off, dry them off and use compressed air. I've got a three gallon air compressor right here in this room with me with a blow gun and one of them little uh, coiled uh, air hoses you know that spiral looking works great for blowing them out and then I just clean them and remove them and I also use ballastol sometimes as a you know a cleaner too if I'm in a hurry. Inside your house. Yeah, Ballastol is great. It was uh, created in Germany right before World War One. It it's, it's used as a cleaner now, though, but it's still good. Oh, yeah, and it'll keep the rust in. Yes, but I did right here at the table. Right here at the regular room or desk, right here. And, uh, yeah, I clean it. I do all this right here, Pete. It's amazing. Hey, Pete, what do you think about me for a minute? I want to ask you a question. What do you think about old Jerry now? 10, 11 years, redneck. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm into primitive arms as well as modern. But, uh, you know, and I love black powder arms. And, and, and I build transmissions and engines in the front room. I mean, I, you've seen pictures over the years when I built the engine in this 77 Scott in 2016 where it was in the front room. I mean, what do you think, Pete? I'm, I'm speechless. Yeah, I think he you, keeps would all that you love a guy like me come down and, and just, you know, move next door to you and have all kinds of parts sitting around in cars and and uh, you come in my house and you, you're like, wow, there's transmissions laid out here on the floor and the table and the engine. Amazing. I, I figured you'd love that, but I mean, wouldn't you be proud of me, though, Pete? I mean, I'm driving these cars that I repair myself. And I'm also a gunsmith. I do my own gunsmith and work here on my own. And, uh, you know, I mean, come on, Pete. Think about it. You are a renaissance man, Jerry. And it's 9 o'clock, so I no longer have to talk to you. It's time for trivia. Ladies and gentlemen, troglodytes, bottom feeders, and barbarians come out of your caves. Let me hear your call sign. This is Alpha India 5, Delta Delta, AI 5 DD, in Central Oklahoma. Hey, we got uh, a good group in there. We also have uh, YouTube coverage tonight. Uh, AI five DD. Is that is that is that your call, Joe? Yes, yes, and it's running. It's running. So check out that if you can't tune in. But tune in. That's probably the best way to get it. Hey, uh, everybody's welcome. I hear the Iowa Hawkeye there. I hear a lot of regulars, but uh, the the key I want you to understand tonight, especially if you're new, is that uh, you guys are important. In fact. Got a couple of ideas tonight to get new folks in, so be standing by, you newbies. We're going to get you in here because that's what makes it all 
really fun is when we get a new station on the air. That's the deal. The format is simple. When I ask the question, if you know the answer, give us your call sign suffix, and we'll call on you to answer. If you would, just wait for us to call on you, and that makes it kind of orderly here. So let's get started. We always start with music, and I've got some, I think, mainly country questions here, country music questions, but who can tell me for a million points, a million points in trivia, where the Statler brothers are from. Anybody want to try that? All right, let's go to Dr. Buchanan. I think they're from Alabama or Georgia. Isn't it been one of them two? But J Jerry, you are consistent. Uh, both those answers are not correct. Anybody else? ORI. ORI. Where are the Statler brothers from? Even a state I'll take. Uh, Kentucky. Kentucky. Also not a choice. Anybody else? Well, one more and I'll give you choices. Choices, please. Uh, who is out there uh, that did new without choices? KDI. KDI. Where are they from there, Ken? Good evening. to Staunton, Virginia. I've been to that town now that I look at the name of it. That is correct. Let's see. That is correct. Way to go, Ken. Oh, Ken, I'm so glad you showed up tonight, my friend. I'm just missing you. All right, Ken, two in a row. All right, let's, uh, let's do ten, two in a row, Ken. Listen carefully. Which one of these fast food restaurants was founded... In North Carolina, North Carolina, KFC, Burger King, Hardee's, McDonald's. Okay, I do. Yeah. Hold on, Jerry. I'm talking to Kent. Uh, anybody? Hey, SLG. Carolina. Uh, SLG. Wow, choice Charlie. Charlie Hardee's is correct. Hardee's, the saltiest. Hamburger ever. Okay, let's go. We're going back to. Uh, they had a better breakfast. Going back to rock and roll. Thank and God. Elmer, I know you're a. Uh, I know you like the. You're a Beatles fan. Would that be accurate, Elmer? Well, I have just about every album and CD possible. All right. Well, let's see if you know what song this is. This may be Lennon solo. So 1971. John Lennon sang the line, those freaks was right when they said you was dead. What song, what tune contains those lyrics? You want choices? Yeah, I'm gonna need choices. Uh, choices are how do you sleep, instant karma, mind games, or jealous guy? I'm gonna say instant karma. Instant karma, anybody else? Instant karma gonna get you. Actually, that's incorrect. It is how do you sleep? Okay, here's another one. Elmer will give you one more shot for greatness. Are you ready? I'll give it a whirl. 1975. What American musician received considerable FM airplay with the song Fooled Around and Fell in Love? Who was that artist? Oh, you know what? Iowa Hawk. Elvin Bishop. I think that's Mickey Thomas, uh, later of the Star. Blank Boulevard, Eric Clapton album. Uh, BMW, BMW. Ocean Boulevard. Ocean Boulevard. I think. I think the Hawk finally uh, finally occurred to the Hawk. Are you doing okay, Hawk? Oh my God! Well, take care of that right eye then, if you can't see out of your left. But uh, well, listen, good. Good, good, good vibes and prayers for you, Hawk. We need you as a uh, as an antagonist out there uh, every night, okay? 
know, you're such a generous guy. Okay, let's let's get uh, let's see who got that last one right. Who was that? Yeah, oh, hey Tom, how you doing tonight? Oh, okay. Uh, how you doing on that? Well, that's good to hear. Here's the second question for you. The year is 1977. What Michigan rock and roller had success with the song Cat Scratch Fever? This is for Tom. That was Ted Nugent is correct. He's a pro gun man. He is, and he was, uh, what was, it? here's a bonus question for you. What was his first band? It was, it was not Ted Nugent, but it, what was the name of the first band he had? Uh, and Boy Dukes. Dukes is correct. Good job, Hawk and uh, Tom. All right, let's go to a new player. Here is, uh, we're reminiscing about the 70s, I guess. This is kind of fun. And this is a James Taylor question, so think about your James Taylor songs. 1970, James Taylor's, one of his biggest hits was released, Fire and Rain. What female name is mentioned in the opening verse of the song? Anybody want to try it without clues? Am I ex? Am I ex? I'm amazed. Maybe not amazed, but uh, you would know something like this. Is it? Is it Karen? Uh, Karen, is that what your answer was? Yeah. Karen is not correct. It, it, it's LSB. a female name. Anybody else? LSB. Uh, LSB. Suzanne? Suzanne is a choice, and that is correct. LSB. I forgot all about that. Yeah, just yesterday morning they let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you. Okay, I forgot all about that. All right. LSB, who got that? You or Susie? Susie, of course. All right, well, please, uh, don't talk anymore. Let's put Susie on the mic for this one. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, here is, here is, this is a tough question, Susie, so I think you're going to get it. My gut tells me Susie gets this. Okay, what? Susie, not Mark, don't let him talk. Uh, 1975 song by the British band 10CC featured a whispering voice they're repeated several times, big boys don't cry, big boys don't cry. For a million points, what was the name of the song, Susie? I'm not in love. That's amazing. Her answer was, I'm not in love, and that is correct. Susie, hey, guys, give Susie some some, some creds for that. That was amazing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, Susie. And, uh, yeah, that's 10CC is a great band. She's got the brains around here. Can't wait this be. Yeah, that didn't make no hard feelings, Mark. Wow. That was well done. Yeah, and that was without clues. All right, here's one for you. The, thank you, Hawk. You're, you're just great. Adding all those comments really makes my night. 1975, what was the Canadian rock band that recorded the song Looking Out? For number one. Boy, this is obscure. Anybody remember looking out for number one? Negative. Anybody remember? If you don't remember, you don't need to tell me, Joe. <laughs> Joe, Joe, every time I have a question and you don't know the answer, you don't need to tell me that, okay? Roger, Roger. All right, thank you, Joe. I'm glad we got that. Well, Joe, see what it is. Pete likes me to tell him when I did know something. I know, but it's really, really not necessary for you to tell me if you don't know, guys. All right. Uh, anybody know who did Looking Out for Number One? The MW. The MW. I'm impressed. Who was it, Tom? Bachman Turner Overdrive. All right. Bachman Turner Overdrive is a choice. That's amazing. That must have been... Um, that must have been, like, before the big, the big time uh, for them. Is that accurate, Tom? Yeah, it could have been. Got all about that. Okay, here we go. Number two in a row for you, Tom. Let's see if you can get this one. 1972, Todd Rundgren, Rundgren rather, released an album that contained the hit songs I Saw the Light and Hello, It's Me. What was the name of the album? Let me give you the choices. Something slash anything. Todd, initiation or faithful? What do you say? 
I think it was something, anything. I think something, anything is going to be correct, and that is a correct answer. Way to go, Tom. Yeah, good job. GY, let's do two more. This is a really good quiz. Not too easy, but still, you know, possible, right? 1972, the Eagles released the song Peaceful Easy Feeling. I need somebody to fill in the blank on this opening verse. And I want to sleep with you in the blank tonight with a billion stars all around. Somebody fill in the blank that hasn't been on. I ask, oh, QQ, that's Marty. Hey, Marty, come on down. In the desert tonight, desert is a choice. That's correct, Marty. Good job. Got a peaceful, easy feeling. That was so cool. All right, here's, here's our last question in this very cool 70s quiz. Marty. Tell me, this is for two million points. If you get it without clues, there's a 1974 song by a major band from the 70s. And here are the opening lyrics. Tell me what song it was and what the band was. The feeling is clear, clear as the blue sky on a sunny day. Everything was you. Ooh. I can tell you this, you are halfway home if you say Chicago. All right, so you're halfway home with Chicago. Let me give you the choices. That was pretty good that you got Chicago. Here are the choices. Low Down, All On Me, Flight 602, or Free. What do you say, Marty, for two in a row? I have a Which one do you say? Uh, Bravo or Charlie? Uh, Charlie. Charlie, 602, flight 602. Anybody else want to disagree? I think it's a different one. I think it's call on me. I think it's call on me. Yeah, call on me is correct. All right, well, nice try, Marty. And a fun quiz. That was really, really fun to go back and uh, reminisce on. All right, well, I do have a, uh, I do have a KW quiz, though, but I don't want to do that quite right now quite at this moment, but uh, we will do that in just a couple of minutes. So let's go to, uh, let's go to Superman. We're going to get easy and then progressively harder. This is do or die, do or die, and a Superman question. Somebody who has not been on tonight, who was Clark Kent married to in Superman? How about a new player tonight? Who is Clark Kent married to? Delta Delta? Delta Delta. Would that be Lois Lane? Lois Lane is correct. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. They got married in 97, apparently. Did not know that. Okay, here we, we go. You're number two. This may be too easy. I thought this was a tougher quiz. What is Superman's secret identity for number two? Clark Kent. Clark Kent is correct. This is almost a KW quiz. I hope it gets harder, Joe. <laughs> okay. All right, Clark Kent works where? Uh, the Daily Globe or something like that, or I can't remember. All right, Daily Globe. Uh, anybody with a different answer? T-U-E. Uh, Brian, T-U-E, what do you say? Daily Planet. Daily Planet is going to be correct. So, Brian, you just took it away from, uh, from Joe. Well, I was close. It was a globe, and the planet is a globe, right? What city, Brian, <laughs> does Superman protect? What city does Superman protect, Brian? Pass. Pass. Is that what you said? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, come on, Brian. Don't, don't come in, take it from Joe, and then act like a deadbeat. <laughs> okay, it's not an act. Uh, I don't know. Uh, New York City? Well, it, it was a fictional town. Anybody with the answer other than uh, yeah, yeah, a new player? Yeah, yeah, Alpha Echo. Alpha Echo, come on down. Metropolis. Metropolis is correct. I thought this was going to be an easy quiz, but apparently not so easy. All right, uh, David, how are you tonight? Uh, doing good. These are getting tougher now. David, uh, which one of these four is not a Superman villain? Who is not a Superman villain? Let me give you the choices. Riot. 
repeating riot, toy man, toy man, two face, two face, or Dominus, repeating Dominus, who is not a Superman villain, David? Man, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, I'm just going to take a stab at it. I'm going to go with uh, Alpha. All right. David says Riot is not a Superman villain. Anybody disagree? <laughs> ABJ. Uh, let's see here. I heard ABJ. Ed, what did you say, Ed? Toy Man. Toy Man, okay. Anybody else? Five Zulu. Five Zulu. Two Face. Two Face says Cozy. And Two Face is correct. Here comes Coleman. Hello, Coleman. Hello, P. How's it going? Good. You're sounding mighty good tonight. How's everything down the road about three miles from me? What do you? What kind of signal do you get on me? About a 40 over. You know, at least you get, at least it's not like dangerous bad. But uh, all right, here's one for you. This is a daily double, Coleman. This can get you two points. But you take a risk if you go for two points because somebody else can grab it from you if you don't get it right. So be uh, be, be judicious on this. Uh, who is the editor of the Daily Planet? Daily Double. What is his name? Perry White. Perry White. Ding, 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 ding. Perry White is correct for the Daily Double. You're up to three points already. Coleman, let's go for number four. What planet is Superman from? Another Daily Double. This could take you to the finish line. What do you say, Coleman? We got the rhythm. But it's Krypton. Krypton. Ding, ding, ding. He makes it to five in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, he's Super Coleman. Give him a high five. Good job. Hey, good job, good job. Super Coleman. Great job, Coleman. Good job, Coleman. It's a bird. It's a plane. But I promised tonight this is kind of a special feature trivia. You don't always hear us doing this, but there's a person in our midst that has great mental powers. You know him as Jerry, W5KW. What you probably don't know is that this guy is a Mensa member of Mensa. He's, what's your IQ, Jerry? I don't think it's even measurable. So we got a KW quiz. Jerry, are you ready? Yeah, let's get it. All right, Jerry, question number one. Which of these numbers has a greater value than 93? Which of these numbers has a greater value than 93? Choices are 36, 12, 7, or 17,388? 17,388. All right, are you sure of that? Well, but I'm, I'm kind of. All right, Jerry, you are correct for number one. You're off to a great start. Way to go, Jerry! <laughs> hey, excellent, Jerry. Remember until he gets five in a row, but yeah, that was pretty impressive. So, Jerry, number two, in the U.S., what are the Republicans? Are they A, citizens of a specific state, members of a political party, a can that the public drinks out of, or a name given to all judges. Sherry for number two. Members of a political party. Political party, he says. That is correct. Man, you are just rolling through this quiz. Okay, number three. I don't want you to rush, because these are the toughest level questions we've ever had on trivia. Number three. This is KE5GGY, Jerry. Why can't you drink safely out of the ocean? Listen carefully to these... These uh, possible answers. Why can't you drink safely out of the ocean? A, it is against the law. B, ships have traveled across the water. D, C rather, excuse me, C, the fish need the water. Or D, because it's salty. Because it's salty. All right, Jerry, are you sure of that? I think I'm pretty sure. I'd say I'm at least 51% uh, think that's right. That is number three, guys. This is amazing. All right, Jerry, number four. Well, somebody peed in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's also true. All right, number four. Thank you, Hawk. Jerry, for number four, how many hours are there in a day? Your choices are 12, 28, 24, 
or 96. How many hours in a day, Jerry? Well, can, let me think. I think 12, there's 12 daylight, uh, well, not actually 12 daylight, then 12 night, but we'll say 24. Jerry, you're up to one, you're up to one away from a five in a row. And this one actually is a little bit tougher, but let's see if you get it for your fifth question. To what kingdom do mushrooms belong? To what kingdom do mushrooms belong? Is it the fungi kingdom, the monera kingdom, the animal kingdom, or the protist kingdom? Jerry, for number five, what do you say? Boy, that's a hard question, Pete, but I think uh, I'm going to say the fungi. Fungi is correct, and Jerry is showing why he's the smartest guy on this frequency. Give Jerry a high five. Hey, Jerry, congratulations, AFIBD. We're not worthy. <laughs> I'm astounded. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, you are, too, there, Station. And, hey, uh, I mean, Brian, but anyway, uh, thank you, Pete. I need a break from cutting all these 36 caliber wads out for my Colt Navies. But, man, I'm, I feel privileged tonight. Thank you very much, Pete. That was amazing. Okay, K5GCY, let's go to another category, 15 questions. Looking for somebody that has not been on all week. All right, so you guys that have had a chance to play this week, rest the mics. So let's get somebody who has not been on all week. Again, this is do or die, so you get to keep going as long as you're correct. And our first question is as follows. If the president and vice president die in a plane crash, who is next in line to be president of the United States? Somebody for two points. How about a new player for this week? Uh, hey, 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 that's John. Roger, it's the, uh, it would be the uh, Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House is correct. Two points. John, how you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. All right. Uh, number three, this is a daily double. So that means you can either answer it without clues, get two points, or you can opt for clues and get one point. So listen to this. In the Girl Scouts, after you are a brownie, what is your next rank so in girl scouts after you're done being a brownie what do you ascend to daily double or do you want clues i think i want clues all right your choices are a cadet e senior c junior or d daisy I'm going to say, I was going to say Cadet, but Daisy uh, sounds uh, good, too. So I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to go ahead and say Cadet. All right, Cadet, he says. Who wants to disagree? Alpha Echo. Alpha Echo's back. You know, that's a Daisy. Daisy, says David. Anybody else? And it is foul ball. It is a junior. It goes Daisy, Brownie. Junior, cadet, and then senior. So, uh, let's see here. Who has it? Uh, John, you're still up to bat. That was a foul ball. All righty, CJ. All right, John, here's another daily double. You can get two points if you do this without clues. In which holiday do people buy the most candy in the U.S.? What holiday do we buy the most candy in the U.S.? What do you say? Uh, I think it's uh, Valentine's Day. All right, he says Valentine's. Anybody want to disagree? Yeah, BDN. BDN, Steve. Well, you know what? I'm going to say Halloween. All right, that's the obvious alternative. Uh, all right, let's see who, who's going to get it. Hello, Steve. You are, you are up to bat. Steve, come on in. All right. And that was a two-pointer, too. Hey, there you go. All right, Steve's up to bat. Steve, where in Illinois are you from? Uh, well, originally from Springfield, but uh, I've lived here near Peoria uh, since 81. You're sounding good, and you always give a good signal down here to Dallas. What are you running for an amp? Uh, an RF kit, an RF2KS. Really, uh, really an RF kit? Is it solid state? Oh, yeah. two. It's got two LD MOS transistors on it. And how much power can you get? Uh, well... If I run what the book said the maximum is, and I put it on my big dummy load, I've seen uh, over a little over 1,900. 
Oh, that's cool. Congratulations. How much does one of those cost? Uh, right now they're about 5050 And then how much do they really cost? About 5050 uh, is that for the kit or is that pre-assembled? No, 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 no. They don't make them in a kit. That's the, they used to, but now they're they're fully assembled, warranted, and tested, and everything. Five thousand. You know how many SB220s I could have for that? Yeah, uh, I, I still have one. They don't have no warm up, no tuning. I mean, you you don't know what you're missing. Gary, was I talking to you, by the way? Well, I know you wasn't, but you know you love your big brother. All right, uh, let's go to Steve. Steve, let's uh, let's get focused here. So this is a daily double. You have two points because you got the last one correct. It's a daily double. Now you get two points on this one if you can get it without clues. You may want clues, though, uh, based on this question. Uh, who plays Senator, I believe it's Amidala, in the Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones? Who plays Senator Amidala? Uh, in Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, daily double. Do you want choices, or do you want to take it for two? Oh no! Believe me, I'm going to need choices. And actually, I never was a Star Wars fan, so this is probably going to go. Uh, this is probably going to be it for me. All right, there's a couple big names here, so we're asking again: Who played Senator Amidala in Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones? Was it Sandra Bullock, Kate Winslet, Natalie Portman? For Amanda Bynes, what do you say, Steve, for number three? I'm, wow, and this is going to be a swag. Um, I'll say the last one. Amanda Bynes. Anybody else? Alpha Echo. Alpha Echo. I think that was me, Pete. Uh, Whiskey Zero, Romeo Delta Echo. Uh, Natalie Portman, my guess. All right. That's Leaf, isn't it, Leaf? It is. You got my name right. I believe, I mean, I've always known you. We've been kindred spirits for generations. Okay, that is correct, Leaf. I thought we was kindred spirits. Now you hurt my feelings. All right. Uh, Leaf, you, uh, you just nailed it. Good job. Are you ready to take it all the way to five? Uh, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Here is a daily double again. You're going to get this, I'm pretty sure. In what American Civil War-based book is one of the main characters named Scarlett O'Hara? You better know this one, Lee, for two points. What do you say? Uh, my first wife was supposedly uh, related to the author, uh, Margaret Mitchell, I think. Uh, Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind is correct. So that was, uh, that, by the way, that is one of the longest movies ever. And not worth it in my estimation, but uh, anyway, your results may vary. Okay, number, this is number four, and you can get two points on this one. It's a daily double. What is the capital of Texas? Leaf for two and a championship. What say you? Oh boy, Texas. Hmm. I'm I'm in Missouri, so uh, I think it's Austin. Austin is correct. There's two points for Leaf. That gets him to five, and he is a champion. Let's give Leaf a high five. Way to go, Leaf! Hey, congratulations, Leaf. AI five PD. We're not worthy. What a group, buddy. Hey, Pete, are you enthused with my existence tonight? Feeling better? <laughs> you you brought him to tears. I did. I noticed he got quiet. I think he's got his crying tail going. I'm gonna sell my equipment. Uh, <laughs> anyway, by the way, Pete, I'm looking at some property adjoining you down there. Time for the grand slam, ladies and gentlemen. This is the pinnacle of trivia. I'm pretty darn sure we got a rain check from last night. Who's out there with a rain check tonight? Alpha Echo. It was Alpha Echo. Is there another rain check out there? Was that you, Hawk? Uh, refreshing my own Okay. And the Hawk, being the Hawk. Hey, Hawk, uh, rumor has it you're quite a uh, showman on the Iowa net. Do you cause trouble on that net, too? We heard a report from several Iowegians on the air tonight that you, uh, you your uh, your reputation precedes you on that net. So, 
Just wondering. Thank you. Made my day, Pete. Uh, I'm glad I could do that. All right, David. Well, you know the deal, David, on uh, on the Grand Slam. They like to talk. I can't hear them. Okay. Uh, David, you got a point because you came over from last night. Not only do you have a point, but you get to uh, pick the category. So is it going to be art, science, entertainment, history, the grab bag, or geography? What do you say, David? Well, I'll say geography. Geography. Here he comes, David, who's done quite a bit of traveling. How many countries have you been in with all your radio station exploits uh, and uh, over the years? Well, overall, including uh, military, uh, 46. That's out of two something, right? 200 and something. Say again. How many countries are there total? Well, I said including the military, 46. Yeah, but how many how many total countries are there? You DX guys should know that. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I just been in a lot of them. All but uh, all but India, I, I could operate from, but India they wouldn't let me operate. Well, here we go. You've got one point. Let's do. Let's do this. This is closest to so. David, you, you may get, uh, I don't know, we'll see if you can hold on to it, but the Barbarians are pretty good at this game. Closest two gets it on this. It's a geography question. And don't cheat, because that, that that's just not fair. Uh, anyway, approximately, David, approximately how many times larger than Rhode Island is Texas? Texas is how many times, how many times can you put Rhode Island into Texas, and closest to gets it, so what do you say, David? You get the first shot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess, <clears throat> because I don't know how many square miles Rhode Island is, I'm going to say five. Five Rhode Islands to Texas? Okay, anybody else? Hey, Huey. All right, we're going to get BMW and TUE as our two barbarians. BMW, uh, Tom. 50 million off, but I'm going to say 60. 60, says Tom. And Brian, that leaves you as number three. 125. 125. Well, this should be pretty clear cut. Let's see. Approximately how many can we get? The answer, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. <laughs> two. Five, seven, two fifty-seven. Brian, you're up to bat. Our lucky guess. Boy, Rhode Island is a dinky state, guys. How many goes in? About like one of our counties. Yeah, two hundred fifty-seven, Hawk, for you slower students, okay? Houston, Houston, fifty-three in Iowa. Then it's been two five seven. At two fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. <laughs> All right, here we go. Brian, uh, now you can have a better attitude going into trivia. You're all, always such a fatalist. You say, I'm not going to make it more than one question. You've got you've to gotta be a positive thinker on this, on this quiz day, uh, there, uh, Brian. Okay, no reindeer questions, please. All right. Here is your second question, Brian. In what city is the Kentucky Derby held? This is for Brian only. Brian, what do you say? Louisville? Louisville is correct. All right, that's number two. Number three. No Kentucky Here is number three. What is the only continent without native reptiles and snakes? This is for Brian, guys. Give him a shot to answer. What is the only continent without native reptiles and snakes. This is Brian. I want to say Antarctica. Yeah, that's a good answer. Antarctica is the answer. That is correct. All right, now we're getting up to the Grand Slam. Grand Slam territory, which means this is going to be tougher. And here we go. What is the smallest country in South America. Brian, only please, for a Grand Slam, what is the smallest country in South America? 
wild goose, chili. Chili, he says. That is not going to be it. Anybody want to step up? Delta, Delta. Uh, Joe. Is it Belize? Belize is not correct. And I, don't, I don't know if you could call that South America either. Or, or Central America. Uh, one more barbarian. BDM. Uh, let's see. Iowa Hawk just barely beat you there, Steve. Hawk. Uruguay. Uruguay, yeah. And the answer is Suriname. Is it Suriname or Suriname? Suriname. Suriname. Okay. Foul ball, Brian. You're still up to bat. Isn't that Aruba? Yeah, Jamaica. A uh, girl, I want to take you. Shock strap with a report. Yeah, just a quick update. 28-7. Oh, the Giants are on the march. Hey, they are on the board. They got to play San Francisco. All right, let's keep going. Brian, you're still up for a grand slam. How's that? Uh, am is that amazing or what? Jerry's helping me out. Yeah, by the way, you can use that W5KW lifeline at any time. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> that sounds cool, and I just ordered some more Duro fell out of Arkansas so for more watt cutting. A big gun IDs in both uh, voice and, um, and code. Would you also like to do semaphore flags, Bill? Would that be okay? No, that's right. <laughs> He's like... Doing smoke signals on IDs. That guy's really uh, up to up to spec. Okay, here we go. This is Brian. This is for you. Okay. Ready. Okay. This is a grand slam question. This is tough. And here's. Oh yeah, I love this. On what day does Canada? celebrate its birthday. What is the birthday of Canada? This is for Brian first, and two barbarians get a chance. What do you say, Brian, for your four question and a grand slam? I'm going to flame out on this one and say uh, all Canada Day. Yeah, they're looking for a date, I believe. Uh, okay. Uh, October 1st. All right, October 1st, he says, two barbarians get a chance to unseat Brian. QQ, what do you say, Marty? October 3rd? Iowa Hawk. Iowa, that's not correct, Iowa Hawk? Iowa Hawk. July the 1st. July the 1st, says the Hawk, that is correct. July the 1st is correct. So here comes the hog. Brian, he did pretty darn good, buddy. Yeah, not bad, Brian. Okay. Okay, here is your second question, Hawk. Let's see how sharp you are tonight. No, I'm dull. What U.S. city is serviced by Hartsfield International Airport? What U.S. city is Hartsfield? In fact, I believe it's Hartsfield Jackson, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know the city, Hawk? Busiest airport in the U.S., I think. Give me the question. What is, what is the city that is served by Hartsfield Jackson? Or maybe just Hartsfield Airport. I think it's Hartsfield Jackson. On Hartsfield, for sure. What city is that? It's the busiest, I believe it's the busiest airport in the U.S. It is. And it's got the longest security line because they only have one, one place to go in. Uh, what was that again? Atlanta is correct. Way to go. Yeah, it's really a bad airport, in my opinion. Just... Yeah, there you go. Okay, here we go. This is number three. And Atlanta, Atlanta is the answer, in case you didn't get that. All right, here we go. Number three. Number three, Iowa Hawk. What U.S. national park is known for its geysers? This is for the Hawk. What U.S. national park is known for its geysers? Yellowstone. Yellowstone is correct for number three. Number four. Number four. 
Give me a double or nothing. Number four. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> this KE5GGY, by the way. You can do that in code and semaphore, too, just to keep up with the Joneses. Okay, here we go. For number four, Hawk, what is the second largest of the Hawaiian Islands? <laughs> yeah. What is the second largest of the Hawaiian Islands? I will hawk what say you for a grand slam. I would say it's Maui. Maui, he says. Ma Maui's correct. How did he do it? Iowa Hawk is a champion. Give him a high five, guys. This is incredible. Hey, congratulations, Iowa Hawk. AI5DD. Hey, oh, man, Hawk. Where the hell is he? What a guy. Did you cause did you cause malicious interference on the Iowa net? Is that what's going on? Yeah, what my doctor called. Anyway, that gentleman in uh, Peoria, his amplifier is going to be heard over in Maui. Yeah, okay. You hear that, Steve? Uh, uh, Hawk says your amplifier can be heard in Maui. Yeah. Yeah, it can. It does. Uh, hey, thanks, Hawk, for recognizing that. That kind of money, it better be. Yeah, I just want that on the price is wrong. Yeah. But here we go. We're uh, we're going to a new category, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? The, what the heck? Let's uh, let's be adventurous and go to the arts and literature a category. I can't believe we're doing this. This is not. One of our strongest categories, but what the heck? Let's give it a give it a try. We'll start with an easy question. Again, I'm looking for somebody who has not been on this week. Somebody who has not been on this week. Francis Scott Key wrote what famous song? Francis Scott Key wrote what famous song? What do you say, guys? Somebody knew. Jerry, Hold on, George, looking for somebody who hasn't been on this week. Who's out there? Jerry. Jerry. Okay, TXW, George, tell me, baby. Our Banger. Our Banner. Right? <laughs> Sorry, the Star Bangled Spanner is correct. <laughs> All right, good job. Number two. Uh, we're going to test you on this one. Who was Adolf Hitler's favorite composer? Who was Adolf Hitler's favorite composer? Probably Air Supply. <laughs> or, or Barry Manilow or somebody like that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what do you say uh, there, George? Oh, man. I really would not know. I was never a follower of Adolf Hitler and Music tank. Um, I'll, I'll say Beethoven. Beethoven, not a bad guess. Let's see if you're right. Uh, oh, that's not what I get. Delta, Delta. Two, two barbarians. Delta, Delta. Uh, Delta, Delta. I think it's Wagner. Who's that? I think it's Wagner. Wagner, not correct. One more. A big gun. Uh, it's actually Richard Wagner. Wagner. Yeah, that's Wagner. Well, that's what Joe said was Wagner. Oh, yeah. oh, who said that, Joe? Yeah, that's Wagner. Oh, Joe. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm 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 not up on that. So, Joe, you're up to bat. Okay, it's Ricard Wagner, but yeah, Richard Wagner. You say retard Wagner? Ricard. It, they pronounce it Ricard, not Richard. That's why I think we should call KW retard <laughs> cannon. Yeah, but you know what, Pete? One thing about it, I got an ace in my hole. All right, here is Joe. You're up. This is good. I'm really, uh, I'm really proud of you. There is um, how many, how many people on the YouTube channel? Uh, looks like there's three concurrent watchers now. You're just kicking butt. <laughs> 
right, you'll probably start getting some money from YouTube pretty soon, right? Well, you have to have a thousand uh, followers. I'm I'm getting there though. Okay, there you go. Okay, um, let's see. I'm trying to find one that you might know. Okay, what? Um, oh, here's one for you. In the book Animal Farm, which many of us have read, what is the name of the farm? In the book Animal Farm, what is the name of the farm? You know, I have that book. I just haven't read it yet, <laughs> so I don't know. I'll give it to one of the uh, troglodytes. All right, any barbarians know the name of the farm in Animal Farm? I think it's called Animal Farm, isn't it? It's the Manor Farm. I didn't know that either. Okay, Joe, you're still up to bat. Sorry, Pete, I never read it. All right, here's one for you. Uh, Joe, what shape? is the scar on Harry Potter's forehead. Joe up to bat for number two. It's like a lightning. What is it? A Z? A lightning? Yeah, that's correct. Lightning bolt is correct. Well done, Joe. <laughs> Joe, how many, uh, how many Grand Slams have you won? I haven't won any yet. This is really cool. This may be a first then tonight, right? Yeah, I hope so. Let's keep going. Get the drum roll ready. Of the Iowa Hawk rooting for you up there in Iowa. That must make you feel good. It does. And I'm trying to find a good one here. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff that I don't think anybody on this frequency is going to know. Um, all right, here's one for you. What was the book written as a sequel to The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, what do you say? What was the sequel to The Adventures of Tom Sawyer? Oh, the great American literature. Um, oh, man. that I haven't thought about that in a long time. That's going to get me. Oh, a clue from the judges. Think of Tom Sawyer's best buddy, and that might help you. <laughs> I, I'll go for my Jerry's lifeline. I was thinking Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. <laughs> and we're going to, uh, from Tom Sawyer to Tom Clancy, I see. No, no. LSB. LSB to try to take it. Huck Finn. I think it's the Huck Finn book, isn't it? Yeah, Huckleberry Finn. LSB. Well, if you're going to get ousted, uh, Joe, at least uh, Mark and Susie took it from you. Well, that's good. Thanks, guys. Okay, here we go. Here's a second question for you guys. What kind of creature... Mark and Susie is Ricky Ticky Tabby. What kind of creature is Ricky Ticky Tabby? Uh, uh, mongoose. Mongoose is correct. Nicely done. Okay, here we go with number three. Number three, number three, what movie character was briefly known as the Chesapeake Ripper. What movie character was briefly known as the Chesapeake Ripper? Uh, Mark and Susie for number three. No idea. The Barbarians. All right, it's a foul ball. It was Hannibal Lecter. I did not know that. Hannibal Lecter is the answer. Okay, K-E-5-G-G-Y. Number three, what did Yankee Doodle stick in his hat? What did Yankee Doodle stick in his hat? Mark and Susie. Susie says a feather. A feather in his in his hat and called it what? Macaroni. Macaroni, very good. All right, that's number three. You ever figure that out? I have not. I bet Jerry would. You're right, that's one of the... Of the questions of life, the meaning of life, the KW only can answer. I'm sitting here cutting out wads. You want to come do it, Pete? <laughs> right, I'm looking for a question. Oh, I like this one. I like this one. This is for Mark and Susie. All right. What was Dr. Watson's? First name, you know, like Dr. Watson, I presume, right? Uh, no, that was Dr. Livingston. <laughs> Who am I thinking of? Doctor, okay, what was, what is Dr. Watson's first name? This is for Mark and Susie, guys. 
Uh, we don't know. We don't. Watch it. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I, sh I don't know. I'm unclear on who that Dr. Watson is. Who's Dr. Watson to begin with? He's from Sherlock Holmes. Oh, is that it? Yeah. For Watson. Yeah, that's right. My dear Watson. Um, oh, anybody with a first name? MQS. MQS. Yeah, Charles Watson. I don't believe it was. Charles. Not correct. One more barbarian. That's Henry. Henry Watson. Henry says the hawk. It's actually John Watson. Mark and Susie, you have fought off the barbarians. Don't know how. Update. Uh, Jacques Strap. Uh, this is W1BG. We have a score update. It is 31.7. 31. .7. 31 .7. How much time is left? Oh. You know, I didn't even look at the clock. About four minutes. Yeah, not much. Now we got pretty much a decided game there. Here is another arts question. In fact, let's go to the uh, let's go to the uh, Bible for this one. Mark and Susie in the Bible, who is considered the weeping prophet in the Bible? Mark and Susie for a grand slam. Who is considered the weeping prophet? What do you say, guys? John. All right, hold on. We've got uh, John is the answer. It's not what I get. Who is the X-ray station? The prophet is Jeremiah. Jeremiah O X is correct. What's the name there, sir? Willie over in Tyler, Texas. Hello, Willie. Good to hear you. It's been a while. Good to hear you, man. Okay, well, this is the Grand Slam, so you get to keep going for four in a row. Here's another Bible question for you, Willie. In the book of Deuteronomy, what mountain is also known as the Mount of Blessing? I believe it's called Mount Sinai. Say that again. Mount Sinai. And, and give me a rough spelling on that. Mount Sinai. Yeah. Sinai, maybe? Yeah, I think he said Sinai. Yeah, Sinai. Uh, that's not what I get. Anybody with the answer? The answer I get, Willie, is Mount Gerizim. Gerizim. So you're still up to bat, Willie. Are you ready? Gerizim? Okay. Looking for a good question here. Okay, here is your second question. What is Dr. Seuss's real name? Iowa Hawk. That slip right by me, Dr. Seuss. Iowa Hawk. All right, do you, you want to take a shot at it, Willie? Uh, it's, it's gone by me. I can't get it. All right. Iowa Hawk, what do you say? David, his relative, it's Geisel. Geisel is correct. Here comes the Hawk. Hawk. Who composed the Christmas Carol Silent Night for number two? Who composed the Silent Night? Berlin, I'm not sure. Berlin. Yeah, a clue. He has the last name of a diehard villain. Last name of a diehard villain from the first movie. Don't know. Anybody with the answer? LSB. LSB. Hans Christian Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> you took the first name, not the last name. Anybody else? It was Franz Xavier Gruber. All right, Hawk, you're still up to bat. All right, listen to this, Hawk, for number two. Romanesque art prevailed during what time period? Romanesque art 
prevail during what time period? Hawk, what do you say? know when Roman escort was uh, was the thing Did I guess? yeah give me a year I'm gonna say 1600 uh, you're not far off it's uh, approximately a thousand AD to the rise of uh, the gothic style in the 13th century so you know what I'm gonna call that a foul ball Hawk you're still up to bat let's see if you can make it to four in a row who was, we're going to history there because I ran out of arts question. Who was the U.S. president during the Bill Clinton administration? Who was vice president during the Bill Clinton administration? What do you say, Hawk? Jerry Buchanan. Jerry Buchanan says, is that you, Hawk? <laughs> Say, Hawk, who is Bill Clinton's vice president for two terms? Alan Gore. He just got back from Geneva. Yeah, that's back. That's that's close enough. Al, uh, Al Gore is correct. Yes, back from Geneva. That's number two. Good thing he invented the internet, too, because we wouldn't be doing this quiz tonight without that. Number three. In what city was the first U.S. Mint opened? In what city... Was the first U.S. Mint opened? What do you say, Hawk? Denver. Denver? No. Please take that answer back. That's impossible. Okay, Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Shane, real quick. Okay. Number four. Grand Slam. You better get this one right, Hawk. This should be two Grand Slams, I think. Oh, you got a five in a row. And did you get five in a row or a Grand Slam, Hawk, earlier? Grand Slam. All right, be two Grand Slams in a night. That'd be pretty impressive if you could get this. In 1939, Philo or Philo Chief Barnesworth licensed his patents for what invention? RCA Victor. Think about this. In 1939, Farnsworth licensed a patent for a major invention invention to RCA Victor. 1939, I will offer a grand slam. What was that invention? Farnsworth, 1939, RCA Victor. I was the television. He says the television. Iowa Hawk correct another grand slam that's two in one night let's give the hawk a high five good hey good congratulations two in a row with ai5bd oh, yeah. we're not worried well done hawk well done that was two grand slams well done hey guys it's almost 10 o'clock so we're gonna call it a night but it sure was fun tonight a lot of uh, a lot of players, some good conditions, and always fun when you guys are here for a full hour of trivia. This is KE5 GGY. Stick around. We got the uh, free for all going. There'll be a crowd in here for several more hours. So come one, come all. Thanks for playing KE5 GGY. Awesome night, uh, PKE5 GGY AF5DD. Seven three, seven three alls.